First of all, I welcome all the delegates to this important meet. I am very happy to be here with you and uh, talk to you on uh, navigating you. Yes. At the outset, I thank Dr. Reddy's people for inviting me to give this talk. And I thank every one of you for your time and your presence. Uh, am I audible, sir? Am I audible? Sir, you are audible, doctor. I think it takes some time, sir, our voice to reach you. Few seconds. Sir, am I audible? Sir, you are audible, doctor. You can come. Arch, am I audible, Arch? That's right. <clears throat> That's what they do. The stone network. Okay, sir. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, okay, sir. It's very important in our days to navigate your diabetic patient to safety of euglycemia. Gone are the days when only a few drugs were available in the market and at your disposal for treating diabetes. Now we've got a lot of beautiful drugs in the basket and which one to choose for which patient is really a tough decision. Intelligence is capacity, is education, is financial status and your uh, availability of time. Just as the ship's captain May we get the ship very safely to its uh, destination with the, if throw the stormy winds, the, the cyclones, the sharks and whales, the icebergs. Just like that, uh, you should be able to navigate your patient safely, preventing him all the time from risks of CV, CV events, renal events, hypoglycemia and whatnot. So the art of managing your patient safely through euglycemia will be... Uh, uh, discussing in the next uh, 30 minutes or so. First, we know what's uh, a glycemic state. We all, this, we all know the blood sugar value is not the same one. It keeps on fluctuating uh, but between uh, 70 to 180. It has been uh, declared, as, uh, declared as the normal value. If the blood sugar goes more than 180, the normal physiological mechanisms of the body lead to increased secretion of insulin which in turn uh, adjusts the peripheral cells to uh, take up glucose in the cells and in the liver, the glucose gets converted into glycogen and, and getting stored there. On the, on the contrast, when the sugar level goes below 70, then the opposite of this happens. The, uh, the, the glycogen in the liver gets converted into glucose again by a glycogen analysis. And uh, uh, this is done due to the hormone uh, the glucagon, which, which acts opposite to that of insulin. So with this, the, our body homeostasis is able to maintain the very fine levels of between 70 and 180. These levels are important. When you treat the patient, you should uh, try all your best to maintain the, the, the blood sugar levels between these two endpoints. Because anyone which goes above and below may really create problems. And the other uh, latest studies have very well proved that um, the glycemic variability is one of the important CV risks, direct CV risks. If your fasting sugar is 70 and after your food, your uh, glucose shoots up to 300, it's a direct indicator of your CV, CV risk. That should not happen. And also, visit to visit, uh, the glycemic variability is a direct marker of CV events. When the patient comes to you once with blood sugar of 120, Next visit is 300. It's really tough for him to manage, for you to manage also. You should, ma you should maintain the same levels. And off late, the, the hypothesis of TIR, time in range, it has come in a very big way and it's catching up at any given point of time on a single day. Your blood sugar levels should be between 70 and 180 for at least 70% of the time per day, per, per 24 hours. That's the time in range. And you should be able to target that with your drugs which means your drugs should act in concordance with the normal insulin secretion of your body. Only a few drugs can achieve this, which we will be seeing in our uh, next slides. So time and range is a very important thing. Your HbA1c may be normal, but the patient may be throwing on to hypo and hyper in this daily diet. In the average may be normal, but it's not actually true. So there uh, time and range comes into effect and the drugs which you give should keep the blood sugar levels between the uh, 70 and 180. And we know euglycemia just now we told 70 to 180. 
when it below, below goes below its hypoglycemia and more is hyperglycemia. Euglycemia refers to having normal range of blood glucose levels. The goal of type 2 diabetes management is to attain close to the state of euglycemia as safely as possible, avoiding both hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. Navigating towards euglycemia is a journey towards glycemic control, and that's what we are going to do. And in the non euglycemic state, it's related with complications. I know the, one of the two important acute complications of hyperglycemia are diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperglycemic hyperosmolar syndrome, HHS. And this can occur even at very low sugar levels of 240 to 250. That should keep in mind. Hyperglycemia that are, is very acute, uh, uh, there is uh, loss of consciousness can occur, seizures may occur, and even death. May uh, patient can be uh, patient may even he may even uh, lose the patient if hyperglycemia is not properly treated. And uh, long term complications of diabetes all we are know very well due to the constant hyperglycemia and uh, glucotoxicity. There is uh, a lot of <coughs> Uh, antioxidants are uh, uh, oxidant um, barrage is there on the uh, on the uh, endothelial surface of all the all the vessels, which leads to um, AGAs, uh, advanced like in, uh, the, the, end point, the end products, the polyol pathways being um, activated, and over a period of time, not in months but over years, it results in uh, endothelial damage throughout the body and results in CV diseases, peripheral vascular diseases, nephropathy, neuropathy, and Retinopathy. So when you when you keep these things in mind, and how we are going to start the patient on treatment, the, the sulfonylurea and the oral combustion therapy come in very handy at this time. It's one of the first add-on options, the latest ADA and ESG guidelines. Even in the previous two three years, uh, sulfonylurea was put uh, down the list after other drugs. But in the latest guideline, it's not so. You can choose any drug of your option. It's equal to Glyphosins or um, uh, GLP analog analogs or gliptins, anything, or, uh, anything, you can, or, uh, anything you can choose or, uh, depending on the patient. The, the therapy should be <coughs> individualized. They are very effective and safe as initial therapy if used in combination with uh, lifestyle modification and metformin. Of course, they are the, they come first. Lifestyle modification and metformin come first in the treatment in patients with dependency of more than 7.5. The fixed dose combinations of the FDCs containing modern sulfonylurea like glycosid like MR are with metformin, they are effective, they are safe, and they are convenient due to their OD dosaging. This is also very important. This is a short uh, note on how uh, the sulfonylurea came into the thing. can be classified into conventional modern. Uh, the conventional SUs are talbutamide and glipenclamide. Talbutamide is not available in the market. But the clinical is still available, but we seldom use it nowadays. I've been, I've not used it for the past 20 years or so. The modern uh, uh, sulfonyl areas are glimipride, uh, glycoside MR, and glipicide, modified release tablets. And based upon their mechanism of action, they can be classified into short acting as talbutamide, intermediate acting as glipicide and glycoside, and long acting as glipenclamide, glimipride, glipicide MR, and glycoside MR. And this is another short note on the history of sulfonylurea. The first uh, report of uh, hyperlysemic activity of sulfonylurea was discovered in 1937. The, the mode of action uh, of the, the, the of, was, uh, was described in the year, uh, 1948. The 1950 first generation sulfonylurea, uh, that's uh, talbutamide, uh, hit the market. The year 1984, second generation sulfonylurea were introduced, like lipicide. And in the 1995, the uh, the third generation came to be. And how do you navigate your patient? The drug should be effective. There are at least six important points before you start your therapy with any drug for a diabetic patient. Number one is the drug should be effective. Should be able to bring down HbA1c and control sugars. That's the number one primary thing. If that is not done, uh, then you, that's, the, that's the primary aim of treating a patient with diabetes. If that's, that's not uh, included in the therapy, it, it's a waste. Number two, the drug should have uh, glycemic <coughs> durability. Should be going on acting, acting for a very long time. Number three, there should be a very minimal risk of hypoglycemia. Number four, 
it should not be adding to your weight of the patient. Number five, it should not be detrimental to your CV health, cardiovascular health. Number six, it should not be detrimental to your adrenal health. These, these six things are basic for any other drug which you start on a diabetic. Now we'll see how, how, how glycoside is effectiveness in, in reducing HbA1c. This is a very broad study which, uh, which included a large number of patients, a lack and uh, 21,000 more than that. It was a meta-analysis of 229 studies. Here it is shown very clearly that the glycoside XR was able to reduce HbA1c level by more than 1%, 1.04% from the baseline after a time. Whereas the midform is able to reduce it by 1%, glycoside was able to reduce it by 0.97%. The glutines were way behind. Uh, it was able to reduce by 0.72% HbA1c from the baseline. Wilda was about 0.69%. DAPA and uh, saxaglutins were able to do it by 0.73 and 0.61%. Reduction of HbA1c is one very important thing you should remember always. Even 1% reduction of HbA1c, it, it prevents the risk of 12% risk of uh, getting a stroke. A yeah, 16% risk of getting a major uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular event, a 24% risk of uh, diabetic death, and a 28% risk of all cause mortality, and more than anything else, 44% restriction of getting a, a diabetic foot ulcer and amputations. So, your drug should be powerful enough to reduce the HBNC by at least one. And, and, and like I said, it's pretty to be superior to when compared to other drugs here in this aspirin this chart. It's a very large study, mind you, more than 1 lakh and 20 tons of patients were there. And once you start the patient, hit him early, they give him good uh, glycemic memory, which will carry on. If the HBNC is well controlled for at least for two years, it will carry on him for another 10 years with very much less uh, microvascular and microvascular complications. That's another beauty. You hit hard and straight right from the start. You use the combination of the and metformin right from the start. And patient, you will give him the, the benefit of a uh, glycemic legacy, which will carry him on for the next 10, 15, uh, uh, 20 years with very much less micro and microscopic complications. And this is uh, these studies, the EC dia study, this shows how the improved control with uh, progressive upgradation was possible with uh, 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 said You start with 30 milligram, 60 milligram MR, then you can rise to 120 milligram, and all the and in all these subgroups, there was a, there was a very good reduction of HPNC. It was across the HPNC spectrum, there's 1.78% decrease in mean HPNC levels. And as the as you go on, uh, go on uh, uh, increasing, and the, when the HPNC has more than 8 to 10, there was a 2.3% reduction in more in, in the mean HPNC range. So more the HPNC, and when, uh, when you use a good dosage, more the reduction is, which is also beneficial to you. And this is a original research, research article. This, we'll be <coughs> discussing this in, in detail uh, later on. It's the effect of glycoside uh, uh, or glycine plus metformin combination on uh, glycemic control in patients with type diabetes in India. It's a real world retrospective longitudinal observational study from electronic medical records. The Indian real world effectiveness of glycoside and glycine metformin combination. 490 uh, patients took, were analyzed during the study. And here it was shown that um, when you use the glycoside alone, the drop in HPNC was 0.62%. When you used a combination of glycoside and metformin, the drop in HPNC was more than 1.3%. And when it's uh, add on, when you add glycoside to your patients who are already receiving uh, other drugs in the, for diabetes, the drop was 1.1%. When you add a glycoside plus metformin combination to the patients who are, uh, who are, who are using other drugs for diabetes, it was 1.2%. This was between the HPNC range of 6.5 to 7. So this has been very effective in treating type 2 diabetes patients. This, this uh, slide shows very clearly. And HPNC reductions in Indian patients, uh, the X-ray study, about 8 out of 10 patients were able to achieve glycemic control. Agents of less than 7 with glycoside XR 60 mg. That was a 1.5% reduction in HPNC, which is dramatic with, for any good drug. The guide study, it compared between glycoside MR and glyvipride, the uh, long-acting modified release uh, glycoside and glyvipride. This shows that the, both the molecules act so nicely and almost are equal. 
the clever bread x uh, clever bread is equal to the clever said mr when when the adjustment was 8.4 and when clever said given it came down to 7.2 and for the clever bread also it was it was 8.2 it came down to uh, 7.2 so the clinical said mr is at least as effective as glyphosate uh, 1.2 percent versus 1 percent reduction in h points from, from the mean base and h points in the intensive arm over a period of five years in the advanced trial which was proved over a period of five years in the intensive arm h points reduction was one percent from 7.48 it came to 6.49 the drug was effective it, it, it was a number of patients included in the study was 4,499. That's about reducing HPMC. Next, we go to uh, treatment with <coughs> durability. The drug durability is very important. It's being the, the, the drug, the dose with which you give the drug, how long it's durable, how long it's effective without changing the dose of the drug. This also is a very important parameter when you start uh, treating a patient. Drugs which have a long duration of durability, they are very good to the patient and to you. Some drugs, they may uh, squeeze the beta cells and uh, lead to uh, beta, uh, uh, beta cell apoptosis and uh, uh, exhaustion. Those drugs may not be useful here. But when you are able to drug, give a drug, it can be effective at least, at least for a bit of five years. You can relax for some time. Therapeutic inertia is one of the biggest blocks for any treating doctor. You ask the patient, it was a bit high. You ask him, why is it high? He says, sir, I didn't exercise for the, because this winter I didn't exercise. Sir. I didn't go for walks. I took, uh, I attended this marriage, this wedding. Okay, we'll see next time. We'll change the drug. That's what you say. And on even the patient's part, he's hesitant to change the drug. This may lead to more increased in HPMC. Whereas if you get a good drug, which has good durability for a long time, this problem will be solved. And uh, when you use when you when you use glycoside, uh, the percent of percentage of secondary treatment failures after five years with each of the sulfur areas given here in the table, only some percent of the patient, patients on 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 glycoside uh, they had failed the treatment seven percent. Whereas with with glyphosate there was seventeen point nine percent, and with glyphosate it was as high as twenty five point six percent. Whereas in 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 glyphosate we start the treatment. At the end of five years, the patients were happily, merrily, they are continuing the glycine with very good sugar levels, very good HPNC. And in the advanced trial, the HPNC range in the uh, intensive arm after a bit of, after a bit of uh, uh, five years, 21.3% of the patients were able to have HPNC of less than 6%, which is dramatic. And 64.9% of the patients, they were able to have the HPNC of less than 6.5%. And more than 81% had the HPNC of less than 7 over a period of 5 years. It is a very good record for any drug maintaining such uh, good the class durability and this being achieved by uh, Glemipride. And next comes the risk of uh, low risk of uh, hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is one bad event which the patient would like to forget. And you also would also uh, like to forget. Uh, one Bad episode of hypoglycemia, it just shatters the patient both psychologically and physically. He 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 will be very afraid to pursue his normal uh, uh, daily activities if he has a bad episode of uh, hypoglycemia. He may uh, he may be afraid to uh, take the drug also. And we put one hypoglycemia episode, it's prone to develop more and more hypoglycemia episodes also. And people who develop uh, recurrent hypo hypoglycemia uh, after. Uh, when compared to uh, other other diabetics who don't have uh, hypoglycemia, these people have six times more uh, uh, they're, they're more prone to develop CV events and uh, heart attacks and whatnot. And hypoglycemia, if, if the patient may have a sudden heart attack, it leads to arrhythmias and heart failures. It's a big, huge list is there. It can it uh, it affects not only the brain, uh, heart but affects the brain also. The brain there's a problem, and even I it can result in a sudden visual loss also. So you should take all the precautions that the drug which you use should not produce hypo hypoglycemia. And sulfonylureas were known as uh, dr drugs which produce hypoglycemia. <clears throat> they are uh, very notorious, but things have changed after glyphosate like MR. We'll see just now. It's a low risk of hypoglycemia with, with, with glyphosate. This is a beautiful biphasic. 
first tail glucose dependent insulin secretion you can see that and respiration of air insulin peak is, can is possible with uh, the glycolysis and there is no benzabate moiety in in glycolysis it freely it freely dissociates from the receptor so you can see the left uh, square is the benzabate moiety the glycoside molecule uh, uh, doesn't have it whereas uh, glimepiride glipizide and uh, uh, glipizide glimepiride all those have benzabate moiety they get attached and uh, this is so they they don't freely dissociate and they are attached to the receptors and uh, uh, glycoside does not bind the pack to receptors also they so initially they can dissociate from that and uh, glycoside can be used safely during uh, ramadan there's no better indication than the safety of this drug for not produce hypoglycemia than the patient using safely during uh, uh, ramadan fasting the incidence of uh, uh, symptomatic hypoglycemia during ramadan in uh, um done overall all the salmonella areas cost uh, 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 17.2% of hypoglycemia uh, episodes, but glycoside caused only 6.6, the glycoside was 12.6, glipin chlamide was very high at about 20%, and even staglipin caused 6.7% uh, uh, hypoglycemia. So, in this trial, glycoside is equal to staglipin uh, for causing hypoglycemia. Only 6.6% of the patients who have run uh, glycoside develop hypoglycemia, whereas it was much high with other sulfur and this And uh, uh, another study, Overall, sulfur was 7.3%, uh, glycoside was just 1.8%, and glimiclamide was as high as 9.1%. Uh, <clears throat> and glycoside in the Ramadan, two beautiful papers, uh, which are done, they, they show very clearly the maintaining uh, maintenance of, uh, of glycemic control with the evening administration of long standing sulfur in male type 2 diabetic patients under the Ramadan fast. You tend to give the molecule after the uh, evening dinner. The evening fasting patients can safely maintain the glycemic control with evening administration of MR 60 mg. And another, another trial, a, a real world study in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus treated with glycoside modified list during the fasting. Uh, this is a Naya Ramadan study. Here, the proportion of patients reporting more than one hyperglycemic episode during Ramadan was as close 2.2 percent only that's a safety of the molecule you can take or in the, you can take in the evening along with your food and in the gay study also with which compared between the glycoside uh, uh, and glimepiride this again shows that uh, the number of patients who developed hypoglycemia with uh, glycoside is 3.7 percent whereas with glimepiride was 8.9 percent the the number of episodes of hypoglycemia was uh, 22 with glycoside range. It was as high as 56 in the glycoside uh, range. So, 50% uh, lower, uh, fewer uh, confirmed hypoglycemic episodes compared to glimepiride. These drugs causes much less hypoglycemia than glimepiride. That's a uh, that's moral story. And the safety <laughs> of yeah, the glycoside CV outcomes. Now, we when we go this, CV outcomes is one of the most things which you keep in mind when you start treating a diabetic patient. Many patients of diabetes that die not due to diabetes but due to CV events. The CV events with, uh, with uh, uh, dyslipidemia and hypertension and other uh, syndrome X constraints, they, they take the life of the patient in the seventh or eighth year of history of diabetes. This is tough. So, that is more and more considered as a CV disease with hyperlysemic episode. So, it always takes all the care of the world. What's the noise coming out? So you should keep in mind the CV outcomes before when you start treating a patient with uh, diabetes. And the glycine cardiac safety is well established. Are, as you know, the sulfur neural receptors, they are present in the pancreas, as well as in the, even in the cardiac cell. They are present in the pancreatic beta cells and in the cardiac cells. The, the glycine cardiac safety is because of the differential affinity for the SCR1 receptors leads to controlled and Pulsatile insulin release, just as the uh, uh, natural one. They don't get attached to the uh, heart cells, heart uh, SUR1 uh, receptors. Whereas other urias, the selectivity of our, uh, the, the, the pancreatic uh, 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 potential ATP channels, the uh, protective ischemic application is being lost there. So they act both on the heart 
and the pancreas. The other, this is the case with other sulfonylureas. Regular side has lower CP risk than other uh, sulfonylureas. As, uh, as, uh, as you can see, the cardiovascular death, when there is no previous membrane infarction, metformin was, is neutral. Clemipride was having was producing more CV death. Regular side also is slightly out to the, to the right. The p value of the is 1.29 and that of is just 1.06, whereas others are very high, like glucose and glipicide. And patients with previous myocardial who had previous myocardial infarction, the, the CV death when is when is assessed, assuming metformin is, uh, is neutral, glucose has a very high risk of uh, the, the p value of 1.32. For for glucose and positive side is just 0.87. Glipinclamide, glipicide, talbutamide, or all they produce very severe uh, CV events in, the, in, in this group. Dipaglide, which was on the positive side in the previous trial, in the when there is no previous macular infarction, it has gone to the negative side in the when there is history of previous macular infarction. This, this study is, comes from the uh, Danish registry. And the collection side has a lower all cause mortality and severe related mortal risk. The mortal risk among support areas is reduced. Network was done here. The comparison of all cause mortality is the lowest with glycoside. The relative risk of 90% uh, level. The p value of, of glycoside is just 0.65. Chlorpropamide, talbutamide were very severe. Glipinclamide is almost neutral. Glipicide was just to this order. And glipicide was having 0.83. For glycoside, it's much, much less. Just 0.65 only. And the comparison of CV related mortality here also. Glamipride was the PVL of 5. For glycoside, it's 0.6. Uh, in fact, you should know had about the Carolina trial, which was the comparative study between uh, linagliptin and uh, the glamipride molecule. After five years follow up, the surprise of many people, the glamipride molecule did not produce was non inferior to linagliptin in producing. Uh, C, uh, CV events. All are expecting that sulfonyl areas who are considered to be very, the very notorious for prevent for, for producing CV events of hypoglycemia, they, they thought it will be otherwise. But a five year follow up in the Carolina trial, linagliptin and uh, climate were having the same effect. Glimpia has proved to be non inferior to lina as far as the CV effects are concerned. The same thing will hold better uh, because glycine is now better. So these studies will show. Like I said, it has an age over glue uh, spread when treating the patients with uh, protecting the patients with CV events. And uh, like I said, when another important thing, it did not increase the risk of stroke. I should see when you compare three molecules, uh, glimepride, glycoside, and glipicide. When mace is concerned, uh, glipride has a moderate risk. Michael infarction, it has a moderate risk. And with stroke, it's a very high risk with the PVL of 2.01.01. Uh, uh, Whereas with the glycoside molecule, the mace was very low. The uh, macular infarction incidence was also very low. And stroke also was very low with uh, glycoside. Association of glucose lowering medications with cardiovascular outcomes is an umbrella review on evidence map. This is the study. And the uh, uh, glycoside scored much, much over the glimepride as far as the risk of stroke is concerned. And the advanced study also, the major macro or macro events were prevented at almost, it was a, a, a down by 10%. The relative restriction was about 10% uh, with when you use um, <coughs> uh, glycoside. And next comes the renal outcomes. As you know, we talk more of kidneys also nowadays. Not only the heart, the kidneys also matter a lot. We talk about the cardio renal continuum. When the heart goes into failure, kidney failure also comes out. When the kidney failure is affected, the most of, most of the patients with kidney failure die of a heart attack. So they, are, they they follow a very close course. So as you care for your heart, you should also care for your kidneys also. And we know uh, the most important cause of CKD in India and worldwide is diabetic kidney disease. And when a patient is when you, when you start a patient on any therapy, you should take all the careful uh, safety in one that the molecule does not affect the kidney. And as you, if the patient escapes the CV event in the early uh, due to atherosclerotic uh, vascular diseases, he may land up in uh, uh, macular and the uh, staging of uh, the kidney failure later on. 
So at every stage, you may, may not, you may have to change the drug, the drug of certain areas. The dose is not the same in the different stages of kidney failure. In stage one, stage two failure, stage three failure. But here is one drug which should not change the dosage at all. The short-acting glycosid is very effective in all stages of kidney failure. Uh, renal when you start the patient on treatment for diabetes, it's always imperative to look for the microbial muria, urea creatine, ECG. All these things are very important things. And once you start a yearly follow-up with, with, with microbial muria, will save you the stage of the kidney disease the patient may enter into. And with family history, with smoking, alcohol, and other things, kidney diseases are being more and more common due to uh, diabetes. So you should keep your watch, healthy watch on your patient as regards to the kidney outcomes are concerned. And we'll see how glycosid is passed in this. The lower risk of doubling of creatinine. There are three important events, kidney events, which we call renal events. One is the risk of doubling of creatinine. Number two is ESRD. Number three is risk of uh, the, the stage which you, you have to go for dialysis. Here, in the, now, in the, when the 4,480 patients with type 2 special were preserved renal function were very close to the study, here, the double the, the of serum protein occurred in 1.5% uh, kilometer incidence with uh, glimepiride. It was very low with glycosid, uh, uh, as, as, as you could see here. And in uh, another study, follow-up also study also, the p-value for glimepiride uh, uh, is higher than uh, glycosid. And uh, it has intensive warm advance when you, get, when you want to uh, reduce the dosage of uh, sugar to much better levels with the intensive warm in the advanced study there was a 27 percent reduction in nephropathy the, the total real events were uh, 26 percent uh, whereas in standard scare it was uh, 30 percent the new microbial patients were just 23 percent in the intensive arm it was 25 percent in the uh, standard arm new micro uh, uh, patients was 2.9 in the intensive arm it was 4.1 in the standard arm and uh, new our uh, percent nephropathy was 4.1 in the intensive arm, it was 5.2 in, in the standard arm. So all these things indicate that when you start glycosid early, the, it reduces nephropathy. Reduction of nephropathy is possible with proper use of glycosid. And 65% reduction in the risk of ESRD, 20% reversal, which is which is really dramatic. A reversal of normal to uh, normal uh, uh, albumuri occurred over a period of five years. The intensive arm was advanced group. It was uh, in the patients who are in the AAR of uh, more than 300 stay with the micro micro almira stage. They got reverted to uh, normal almira stage over a period of five years when you when you use uh, <coughs> glycoside as this uh, graph shows you. And but when you compare glycoside and glycoside, also the results are able to see. There is 46 percent reduction in ESRD also in the Macroalmuria got converted to micro and become uh, normal muria. And even ESRD also has a reduction in ESRD as the, the intensive arm in the advanced arm. When the total number of patients were 8,494, there was a 10 year follow up. Here also, this shows very clearly that there's a 46% overall ESRD reduction in ESRD. And a reduction in ESRD in CKD, the <clears throat> subgroups also. Better outcomes with preserved kidney function. The kidney function is normal, or when there's no CKD, the events are so much less, the bottom by 84 uh, percent. And in the second stage one and two, also it came down by uh, 66 percent. So much so that the National Kidney Foundation, the KDOQA, the Kidney Disease Outcomes uh, Quality Initiative, they told very clearly that uh, the glycosid can be given in all stages of kidney failure in uh, when the areas are between uh, 40 and 60. When they in grade three, get four, uh, uh, even but 30 and 45 can be given safely. Even in the EGFR goes below 30, also the drug can be given safely. Whereas glimepiride, you have to use with caution between the, in the, in the ESR between, between uh, 40 and 60, between 30 and 45, and it should not be given when the ESR goes down 30. Glycer can be used without those adjustment uh, in seeds is three, four, and five. And weight neutrality. This is another important aspect which you should always look into. Weight neutrality, when, the, when you start the patient on drug, you should not put on weight. Insulin, we know, is an anabolic uh, hormone. Uh, patients who are insulin, they tend to put on weight. 
and all subluminal areas they increase the substitution of insulin so patients on subluminal areas they put on weight in spite of when you ask the patient to lose weight on one end the patient puts on weight and on another end it's, they are uh, contradictory so his uh, uh, the glycemic targets may go ivory so in that case you should be very careful that the drug should not uh, uh, produce uh, weight gain and it was observed beautifully in the three trials when compared the uh, the vrd trial which compared insulin and the, the glutathione the weight gain was almost 8.1 kg after after five year period in a cohort study and where other supplements were used it was 3.5 kg weight gain was there there is an advanced study which in glycoside there is it's it's zero kg weight gain plus it produced very less uh, weight gain because of its action it's uh, least affected it, it attached only to the uh, supplement receptors in the uh, pancreas and is impact to stability so very there's very much less uh, uh, weight gain with <coughs> glycoside and weight neutral even a period of 5 years that was said the glycemic mark shows very clear if there's no gain or no loss it was just maintained as such so uh, better weight control and bmi control during ramadan also ramadan people usually tend to put on weight or uh, those who really fast they come down in weight but here in this study a, a, a real world study the uh, uh, daya ramadan study which i already uh, uh, referred to uh, uh, body weight change was almost uh, just 0.5 kg only and uh, bmi also was almost normal that's not not much of a change after one month of ramadan fasting with when you use <coughs> glycoside so in summary uh, i'll i'll let add two more point uh, indian patients in the developing world uh, we are hard of money patients you are re really rich but they won't like to spend money for their own body they like to go to movies and buy costly cars when you when you prescribe drugs uh, costly drugs they think twice or thrice before buying a drug and even poor patients who are income is so low when you want to prescribe big big drugs with a very costly range they they per day and especially for old people and people who are dependent on others when you give it a, 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 a limited monthly budget they'll be happy to say sir uh, my mother is like god to me sir i'll uh, definitely give the drugs but when the monthly budget exceeds much more then the priorities change and uh, that becomes a very big block when the financial cost of the drug is concerned now, now the next thing is this can be used safely even in uh, patients have osteoporosis women especially more than three years the post menopausal period when they have got osteoporosis uh, many drugs cannot be given see for example <coughs> uh, you can't give glutathione uh, pyoglutathione produces fractures whereas uh, the glycoside can be given very easily even in, in, in those instances so uh, glycoside is a uh, sulfur area receptor one specific causing biphasic insulin dependent glucose secretion about one like i said is at, at least as effective as uh, levipride either as a monotherapy or in combination like i said helps in uh, navigating patients safely towards uh, the glycemic goals with low risk of hypoglycemia is very important as compared to other issues and like i said has favorable cv and renal outcomes and is weight neutral so like i said helps in glycemic control while fasting and does not need dose adjustment in ckd these thing, these things have emerged from our discussion so we'll go to the next topic it's just a, i'll be saying our own uh, indian study paper to say uh, compare this uh, and then we'll i'll finish up in the 5 minutes so like i said sulfuric with a difference it's a unique mode of action the the pancreatic beta cell uh, sulfur one your receptor one specific controlled and pulsed insulin secretion it's very efficacious on for other issues and treatment therapy is there ideal choice in type diabetes management in the case of issue is being considered low risk of hypoglycemia there's renal safety there's the cv safety and with this six point we discussed in detail all this, all this while so this is the paper which i, which I, was, I was referring to it's the original research article effect of uh, glycoside or glycoside plus metformin combination on glycemic control in patient with type 2 diabetes in india it's a real world retrospective longitudinal observational study from electronic medical records indian real world effectiveness of glycoside and the glycoside plus metformin comes it's very latest study it comes only in the year uh, 2020 it they had 498 participants 90 days we will just go through it now 
it's a retrospective longitudinal observational regular study it was done on the uh, the electronic medical record source from the health fix technology prd the study population the emr data of indian type 2 patients on uh, oral, oral antidepressant agents two experience readings after at least 90 days of treatment were taken on all these patients they were studied the duration was between january 2016 and october 2019 the patients were broadly classified into four groups number one people who are, who are put on glycoside <coughs> They, they was the one they are break night they on they have started like said only there's the first group and the as a sub group is uh, was added to patients who had other ODS on them like uh, uh, metformin or insulin or glutins and the second big group is like I said plus metformin combination it was initiated in some group of patients and it was uh, this combination was added on to uh, other drugs which patients were already taking uh, and we'll see how uh, these conversations work. So this is the study on number of patients, which uh, they were divided either again two subgroups with occupancy of more than 6.5 to 7. 420 patients were enrolled in this. And uh, occupancy of more than 7 was 498 patients. Uh, Glycoside only was put on 66 patients. Uh, plus, plus metformin was 179 patients were put on it. Uh, Glycoside add-on drug was uh, it was 116 patients and glycoside plus metformin was on uh, 84 patients same in the other column also so this is a broad group patients they uh, will they are put on glycoside they were studied uh, after thorough estimate hbnc they are asked to come twice and every three months they were uh, the hbns was compared and this is the result the four groups we had six uh, two readings and all the patients this is how they mattered. The study, the endpoints were primary endpoint was mean change in HBNC was studied from baseline over a 90 days treatment period. Secondary endpoints were also, also assessed as assessment of dosages and formulations of glycoside and glycoside metformin, assessment of anti hyperglycemia agents to which glycoside or glycoside plus metformin were added as adjunct. These also were studied. This is the one. When the patients uh, more than uh, with the HBNC of more than seven, seven or more than seven, they, uh, when you add glycoside only, the HPNC came down to by minus 8%. When glycoside plus metformin was added on to the knee patient, it was down by 1.6%. When you add glycoside to a patient who's on other ADAs, glycoside only, the fall in HPNC was 1.2%. And when you add a combination of glycoside plus metformin to these patients who are on other drugs, the, it came down to one percent Four percent, and this is between uh, six point five. Uh, it between uh, six point five and seven. This is also when you add glycoside only, the fall in expensive was 0.62 percent. When you add uh, glycoside plus metformin to your new patient and drug day patient, it was 1.3 percent. When you add the glycoside to a patient who is on uh, other drugs, it came to 1.1 uh, percent. <clears throat> when you add on glycoside with metformin to patients who are other ADS, it came down to 1.2%. So there's a uniform reduction because all the baselines in the study arms. It was it was ranging from 0.8 to 1.4. So all the dosages were used in these in these studies. It was uh, from uh, 40 milligram to 80 milligram, 160 milligram. Uh, such, uh, Immediate release and extended release tablets were 30 milligram and 60 milligram. The anti hyperglycemic agents to which glycoside or glycemic were added included uh, biguanides, which are almost all the patients were, uh, were on uh, biguanides. Deep uh, 4 inhibitors, but 70 uh, percent had deep uh, 4 inhibitors. Insulin uh, patients who are insulin was 42 uh, percent to whom this combination were added. Acid inhibitors, they were 14.8% uh, were on acid inhibitors for which these drugs were added. Alpha glucose inhibitors, patients were received 3% of the patients over which this was added. Acid inhibitors was 3%, and other supplements was 1.8%. So, to conclude, the, the effectiveness of glycoside uh, uh, and plus metformin prescribed to Indian patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus during routine clinical practice in India was assessed using electronic medical record data. Glycoside or glycoside plus metformin prescribed as mono and add-on therapy during routine clinical practice 
effectively reduce it will see in indian type 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 2 type of patients and glycosate can be a, an ideal choice if su is being considered and as i already told you when you add the drug first you give the patient the benefit of uh, glycemic <coughs> legacy thank you so much and I, i thank you once again for all your patient hearing i'll be happy to answer questions